Hi. <laughs> There's a story about a little girl who grew up in a small town. Her family had always been traditional Jews. You know, the kind that drives to Shul on Shabbos, eats ham doesn't eat ham and shellfish, white on Yom Kippur, you get the gist. When this little girl was six years old, a new family moved to town. They were Jewish too, but had some funny customs. The father always wore a hat and jacket and walked around with these little black boxes in a velvet bag. The mother always dressed modestly, ran a Jewish preschool, and not to mention, their baby was just the cutest. One Friday night, the little girl and her family went over for a Shabbos meal. The food was delicious. Homemade challah, golden matzo balls, but what struck them most was the warmth, happiness, and spirituality in the house. They were hooked. One meal followed another, and the little girl and her family loved the atmosphere and environment that they were exposed to in this religious couple's home. A Jewish day school, Shabbos, and kosher soon followed for the little girl and her family, and she went on to attend a Jewish high school, traveled across the world to Israel for seminary, and eventually became a preschool teacher in the town where she grew up. I know this story very well because it's my story. And as this little girl can attest to, there's nothing more special and welcoming than the environment I was exposed to in the home of Chabad Shluchim. I was exposed to. Exposed. Exposure. What is exposure? When I think of the word exposure, it seems like a very passive word. It's nothing forced, just an environment that you come in contact with. In other words, while it is there, it's not the main focus, but something to be soaked up, kind of like the way people tan. It doesn't happen overnight. As a young child, I was exposed to Tyra, Hasidic values, and the warmth of Yiddishkeit from the Rebbe Shluchim. In the last two years of teaching preschool, I've learned so much about the importance of exposure when it comes to giving over skills in all areas of education. In our school at snack time, the Moors are encouraged to sit and eat their own snacks together with the children. I really like to bring healthy snacks. I like seaweed, edamame, jicama, and green beans. The first few months of the year, my students would look at my snacks with kind of weird looks on their faces. Someone asked of taste, some said, ew, and some just looked curious, curiously. A couple months into the year, I decided to bring extras and offer my snacks to the children. Surprisingly, nine out of 10 of them were halishing to taste it. They didn't have to taste, it was just an offer for them to see what it could be. Almost all of them were excited to take a bite and see if they liked my edamame and jicama. Majority of them actually enjoyed it and asked for more. So many times this past year, I watched all of my students devour jicama, green beans, and seaweed, and I even offered it as an incentive. Every, everyone who puts a bike away gets a piece of jicama. Literally, I felt like a super mora. My kids are cleaning up and they're eating healthy. Yeah. These are kids whose parents claim they're picky eaters. What did I do differently that created the positive attitude towards healthy snacks? I simply exposed the kids to myself eating those healthy snacks in a safe and positive environment. I believe that exposure and role modeling are important and integral for every skill that a child will learn in preschool. Apropos, I didn't know this when I wrote this, but the Friedrich Rebbe shares in the famous Sefer, Klalei Chenech Vahedracha, a defining difference between a Malamed and a Mechanech. A Malamed teaches a child information, or, as I'm going to put it, hard skills. A Mechanech is an educator who works with a child's deficiencies, character flaws, soft skills. And what I found out is that when I adopted the Mechanech approach, the Malamed job just falls into place. What does that mean practically for me? My big focus is on soft skills, on midais, personal char characteristics that enable someone to interact in peace and harmony with others, or on a preschool level, waiting our turn, problem solving, and listening to our friends. When I set goals for the children in my class this coming year, these will be my main focus. These midais are the bar that my students need to reach in order to succeed. 
Once the child is exposed to the teacher's gentle guidance and working on their flaws, they will automatically be more receptive to learning new information. And it took me some time to realize that. When I started teaching, I was coming from the Malamed perspective. My focus was much more on the hard skills, the skills with easy to see milestones, like letter and number recognition, number sense, and fine motor control, like writing. Every day had structured time for these things, and what I discovered was that even with this constant barrage of activities, there were some kids that got it and some kids that didn't. And what I realized is that these children weren't ready for this knowledge because they were missing a strong foundation of these soft skills. So I dialed it back, made a little less structured environment, and saw some amazing things happen. Now don't worry, we still learned all phase, played number games, worked on our fine motor skills, but I switched my focus to praising a child's hard work and effort, even if he didn't finish what he was doing. Constantly writing mitzvah stickers to send home, kind of like reverse mitzvah notes. When I saw someone helping a friend and giving the children a sense of ownership over the choices, both good and bad, that they made. Now this approach was much harder for me because I was missing the concrete milestones and personal satisfaction that hard skills gave me as a teacher. There wasn't a list I could check off. David completed A, B, C, nope, none of that. But when I let go of this pressured hard skills environment, I saw the kids grab on. In my pre-K class, every afternoon, I put out centers for the Mude whole subjects, like letter recognition, math, but I try to put a bigger emphasis on play-based activities so that my children can develop these soft skills. And in general, the kids really enjoy them. But right before Pesach, I had one child come to me consistently every day and tell me she was bored. So I asked the kindergarten, which is pre-1A for everyone that's um, from New York, for an extra writing packet and pulled it out. I made a big show of it and I said, if you're bored, you can do your board book. She was thrilled and all of the kids wanted one too. So I made copies for each child and they got to work. Now, I just meant this to be an added activity to be available for centers every day, but because this one child had such a sense of ownership and drive to work on this board book, even the kids who would never have touched this wound up doing it. Had it been a mandatory frontal teaching activity, they probably would have struggled. In fact, it was such a hit that right after rest time, which is when our centers are available, I had kids that would not even look at what I put out and come up to me and say, Maura, I'm bored. It got to the point where I had to establish a 15 minute, you have to participate in centers until they could do it. They actually started to crave these hard skills activities. When you start with a strong foundation of soft skills, it naturally opens the child to academic learning. And by the end of the year, I saw such positive developments in my students' interactions with those around them. I saw a boy that went from walking away if a friend got hurt to pausing the game to check if they were okay. I saw a child who used to give up when something was too hard for him, develop the will to keep going and ask for help if he needed it. I saw a strong girl stop herself from hitting and talk to her friend. And I saw a precious neshama go from not including others in her game to starting games with the entire class. And along with these midas, I saw improvements in those hard skills milestones as well. When a teacher successfully cultivates positive thinking and patience in a child who wants everything right away, they will naturally be more patient in applying themselves to understand a concept in math, English, or Parsha. When a teacher successfully opens up a child's heart to being more compassionate with their friend, they'll naturally be more sen sensitive to the importance of what they are learning. I believe that true chinach isn't about the chamesh or aleph base we've learned, or the intricacies of every yamtif although these are important, and we know that there is intrinsic holiness in all of these details. But first and foremost, chinuch is about helping to develop a child's midais. There's a famous pasuk in Mishlei that says, chinuch l'nar al pi darkai gam ki yaskin la yasar mimena. Educate a child according to his way, even when he's old, he'll not depart from it. When we fulfill our job as a mechanich, we focus on the character traits of our students, the traits that need to be worked on. These midas will remain and continue to develop within our students for their entire life until they themselves have the opportunity to mechanic their children and students in the best atmosphere possible. It's a full circle. Trust me, I've lived it. Thank you.